End-stage renal failure is one of the leading causes of death worldwide. When the kidneys stop functioning, the only way to survive is through dialysis, a procedure that filters waste products from the blood when the kidneys can no longer do so, or through a kidney transplant. You might be surprised to learn that although more than 10 million people need these treatments every year, less than half actually receive the life-saving care they need. This means that while you're watching this, thousands of people around the world are suffering in silence and losing the battle because they lack access to the medical care they so desperately need. That's why this video is so important. Over the years, as a kidney disease specialist, I've identified three main reasons why nine out of 10 of my patients reach end-stage renal failure. Number one, more than 90% of people only discover they have advanced kidney damage during routine checkups, such as blood tests, urine tests, or an ultrasound. These are usually for unrelated reasons, such as a work-related checkup or the evaluation of symptoms like unexplained fatigue or back and abdominal pain. In fact, when they show me their test results, and when I notice some degree of kidney failure, I ask them, how long have you been suffering from kidney problems? The answer is always the same. They're surprised or think I'm joking somehow. This happens for a simple reason. Kidney failure is a silent problem. The first symptoms are so subtle that they often go unnoticed, even by healthcare professionals. Number two, most people don't know how to properly prevent kidney failure. Although there are natural remedies that help cleanse and protect the kidneys, these are unknown to many. At the same time, Patients and some doctors don't know enough about the substances and habits that negatively affect the kidneys, accelerating the deterioration of these organs. Today I'll show you the eight worst habits or mistakes people make that damage the kidneys. Knowing them is the first step to protecting these organs. And number three, when someone already has signs of kidney problems, such as getting up to urinate frequently at night, noticing foam in the urine, developing kidney stones or cysts, they don't know what to do to stop the disease from progressing or even how to reverse it in many cases. So my message is very simple. The lack of quality information is so, as dangerous as diabetes itself, uncontrolled high blood pressure and other health problems can lead to kidney failure. Self-knowledge is the most powerful tool to combat this and many other diseases. I'll quickly tell you about the stages of kidney failure and the first symptoms that appear. Besides filtering our blood and producing urine, the kidneys are a veritable hormone factory. They activate vitamin D, regulate blood pressure, and maintain the acid-base balance in the blood. They are also essential for bone health and red blood cell production, which is key to preventing anemia. The kidneys have many vital functions, so when they fail, the effects are not only seen in the urine but are felt throughout the body. You need to know that kidney failure is not a disease in itself, but the end result of many other health problems, the main ones being diabetes, uncontrolled high blood pressure, and many bad habits that cause inflammation in the body, especially consuming products or foods with toxic ingredients, as I will show you. Kidney failure progresses in five stages, the first being the mildest, and the fifth, the most severe or final stage, where dialysis treatment is generally required at the beginning. While there may be no symptoms, you should pay attention to these early signs. Getting up to urinate more than once a night or more than twice if you are over 65. Waking up with a very swollen face and eyelids. Noticing any persistent change in the color of your urine. Normally it should be light yellow, but if it is very dark, reddish, or any other color, it is a warning sign. Noticing that your urine is very foamy like the foam that remains on egg whites when you beat them. While a little foam that disappears quickly is normal, the presence of several layers of bubbles, as if the toilet water had soap in it, is not normal. Noticing swollen legs, especially the feet and ankle area, and frequent muscle cramps, especially at night. Other symptoms that may indicate that the problem is more advanced and you are accumulating toxins in your body are unexplained fatigue or tiredness, especially when accompanied by body aches, muscle and joint pains without an apparent cause, as well as nausea, frequent vomiting, disgust for foods you previously enjoyed, and intense pain all over your body or wounds that it takes time to heal. 
shortness of breath when walking a few steps, and as the problem progresses, frequent forgetfulness and difficulty concentrating appear. It's as if the person has a persistent brain fog. This is often confused with dementia, but it cannot be kidney failure. That said, let's now look at the eight worst mistakes or bad habits that people make that lead to kidney failure. Pay close attention, especially to numbers seven and eight. The first is not getting timely checkups. The best way to detect kidney failure in its earliest stages is with a simple blood and urine test. It's as simple as measuring creatinine levels in the blood or seeing if you are eliminating excess protein in your urine. Ideally, you should also have a kidney ultrasound to see if there are any hidden lesions. Now, who should get these checkups? Everyone with diabetes, high blood pressure, kidney stones, or many cysts, or any problem in any other organ, such as the liver, pancreas, or heart, or those who use medication chronically for any other reason, should get a checkup, not only for their kidneys, but also because it is very important to control these diseases, which are which end up causing kidney failure. And for people who feel perfectly healthy, remember that kidney failure may not show symptoms in its early stages. That's why, if you frequently consume the products I'm about to tell you about, or if you're over 35 or 40 and have never had a checkup, it's time to do so. The second mistake is abusing medications, supplements, or vitamins without medical supervision. Who hasn't gone to the pharmacy with a headache or muscle pain and asked for an anti-inflammatory, and when the pain didn't go away, tried another remedy or doubled the dose on their own? Another example is antacids like omeprazole. Who hasn't experienced heartburn and taken those over-the-counter remedies? There are also cases of the flu or a sore throat where antibiotics are often taken without a real need. And as a curiosity, did you know that there are even some vitamins that can damage the kidneys when not used properly? These are essential for health, but in excess, they can be very dangerous. Two of the most common are vitamin C, which, although known for its benefits in excessive doses when supplements come with 2,000 building bollamers or more, can. These products can lead to the formation of kidney stones or vitamin D, which in high doses can dangerously increase blood calcium levels, clogging the kidney filters and causing kidney failure. These products seem harmless, but when used improperly in high doses or combined with other medications you may be taking, they frequently cause kidney failure. Believe me, my advice is to always consult your trusted doctor before taking any medication or supplement, especially if you have a history of kidney problems. Also, avoid self-medication or overuse of over-the-counter remedies, and above all, be sure to avoid the other mistakes and bad habits I'll tell you about now. Number three, consuming excessive amounts of foods that increase acidity in the body. Consider very common problems like kidney stones. This occurs when certain compounds in the urine, such as calcium, oxalate, or uric acid, become too concentrated and begin to crystallize. It's as if grit or tiny rocks form inside the kidney, which can cause a lot of pain or, in some cases, no symptoms at all. This process occurs more easily when the urine becomes acidic, which... <laughs> this happens with diets very high in animal protein, and especially with the frequent consumption of ultra-processed foods like sausages and junk food. Excessive consumption of these products, as well as daily consumption of animal protein such as red meat chicken, or fish, increases acidity in the urine, meaning it lowers the pH. This creates a perfect environment for kidney stones to form. But don't be mistaken, I'm not saying that consuming meat is bad, but rather that you shouldn't overdo it and, above all, vary your protein sources. In other words, you don't need to eat meat every day for lunch and dinner. On the contrary, a plant-rich diet has the opposite effect. It alkalizes the urine and increases the pH. By consuming more fruits, vegetables, and legumes, acidity in our bodies is reduced, thus preventing the formation of crystals that can become kidney stones. And this isn't just my opinion, it's science. Studies have shown that plant-rich diets protect the kidneys by reducing the acid load in our bodies and can slow the progression of kidney damage in those who already suffer from this problem. And contrary to what many believe, eating more. These not only help prevent and combat kidney stones, but also improve the function of the entire body in general. And here a big question arises. Can I consume leafy greens rich in oxalate if I already have kidney stones? 
While leafy greens like spinach and kale are very rich in essential nutrients, it is true that they contain oxalate and this can contribute to the formation of stones in some people, especially calcium oxalate stones. However, a key strategy to enjoy these vegetables is to consume them together with a source of calcium, such as natural yogurt, tofu, or almonds, for example, at breakfast or lunch. The calcium from food binds to the oxalate in our intestine, preventing its absorption and thus reducing the risk of kidney stone formation. Note that those who have kidney stones should not decrease their calcium intake, as many believe. On the contrary, they should increase their intake of this nutrient in a healthy way, ideally with foods rich in oxalate, such as leafy greens. That's why I say that self-knowledge is the most powerful tool for prevention, and reversing diseases is extremely important. It's important to emphasize that neither kidney stones nor other kidney problems come from vegetables. Good habits and a healthy diet shouldn't be blamed, as in most cases, stones form due to excessive salt consumption, ultra-processed foods, sugary drinks, insufficient water intake, and a lifestyle that overloads the kidneys. Reducing these factors significantly reduces the risk of kidney problems. However, each case is unique, so it's always necessary to consult with your trusted doctor to determine the best approach for your specific situation. Mistake number four, consuming excessive salt or sodium. Pay close attention here because this is devastating for the kidneys, but table salt isn't the main culprit. The real enemy is hidden in ultra-processed foods. Most people consume excess salt without realizing it, as it's hidden in products like sauces, dressings, grated cheese, cold cuts, crackers, commercially produced bread, and frozen meals. This hidden salt has a significant negative impact on the kidneys and in the long term can lead to kidney failure. In fact, excess salt is one of the leading causes of kidney disease. Kidney stone formation is another common concern. There's a myth about salts like Himalayan pink salt or sea salt, which the industry promotes as healthier options. In reality, all these salts contain large amounts of sodium, so excessive consumption is just as harmful. To protect your kidneys, the recommendation is to consume less than 5 grams of salt per day. This is roughly equivalent to a small teaspoon or even less if you have medical advice. Remember that this amount includes all the salt you consume throughout the day, not just what you add to your food. So reducing ultra-processed foods loaded with sodium and replacing table salt with healthier seasonings like ground bay leaves, cardamom, pepper, or turmeric is a simple but powerful strategy for kidney health. Beware of mistake number five, holding in your urine. Don't do it. Retaining urine in the bladder creates a breeding ground for bacteria which can travel to your kidneys and cause serious infections. This practice also alters the bladder's structure, leading to the formation of diverticula, incontinence, and other issues. It alters its function. The same applies to your intestines. When you feel the urge to go to the bathroom, do it. Don't ignore the impulse. Everything you do to take care of your gut health improves the function of your kidneys. Mistake number six, consuming or inhaling toxic substances. One of the best known risks of kidney failure and cancer is smoking, especially due to the presence of contaminants called nitrosamines in cigarette smoke. These are highly carcinogenic substances that can remain trapped in your home environment even after you've put out your cigarette. But there's an alarming fact. Processed meats and sausages also contain high levels of these substances. To give you an idea, just one sausage can have levels of nitrosamines comparable to those of four cigarettes. This could partly explain the increase in kidney cancer cases we've been seeing in recent decades, even with reduced smoking. It's crucial that you understand that what you eat has a direct impact on your kidney health and beyond tobacco. Ultra-processed foods are a real danger. Let's move on to mistake number seven, performing kidney cleanses or detoxes. Be very careful with this because some people recommend diuretics, megadoses of vitamins, herbs, or purgatives to supposedly facilitate the elimination of toxins. But in reality, our kidneys are designed to cleanse themselves through good habits and the water we drink. While some herbal teas can be helpful and improve kidney function when used properly, such as hibiscus, oregano, and turmeric. Excessive use of natural diuretics like horsetail and dandelion can cause dangerous losses of minerals like potassium and magnesium, severe dehydration, and imbalances in blood pressure. 
In extreme cases, the misuse of these herbs or diuretic remedies can lead to severe acute kidney failure. There are also people who promise to dissolve or break up kidney stones using plants like chancha piedra, hydrangea root, and nettle. But these herbs can stimulate the mobility of kidney stones instead of breaking them up, and this increases the risk of them becoming stuck, causing severe renal colic or even kidney failure. Now we come to the worst mistake that damages your kidneys the most. Drinking water only when you are thirsty. It's a late symptom of dehydration to do this. It's like watering plants only when they're wilting. That's why it's best to drink water constantly throughout the day, up to two hours before bed. You can start the day by drinking one or two glasses of water or add half a squeezed lemon for an extra dose of potassium, magnesium, and vitamin C. How much water should you drink per day depends on your weight and activity level, but a very simple calculation is to multiply your weight by 30. The result is the amount of water in milliliters you should drink per day. For example, a person who weighs 75 kilogars should drink 250 maltesmol, or a little over 2 liters per day. If you exercise, always carry a half-liter stainless steel or glass water bottle. Avoid using plastic, especially thin disposable plastics, because they release microplastics that accumulate in the organs, including the kidneys.